So let's go in and let's start scoping some expressions. So out the gate, the first thing is you don't want to just go in and start pulling verts because one, it's going to take you a long, long time. And two, your points are going to be moving in a consistent, easy to control manner. So what I like to start with is I like to start with a lattice and I like to go broad at first and then build my shape down. But I want to have all of the main motion and the main point movement to happen with a deformer because I know things are moving very cleanly and I'm not allowing any user error to pop in. To do that, let's just kind of duplicate this head. So from here, I'm going to grab the character's mesh. I'm going to apply a lattice. All right, so now we have a lattice. You guys have seen this before. You know I love these. Pulling the character around. The cool thing about a lattice is you can move the lattice and the lattice base. You move these together and nothing deforms. So you can put this wherever you want. And right now this will affect anything within the cage. So this is an approach that I, I came up with years and years ago and I honestly, I still like it. So I use it often. So this is uh, how I like to block things. So I go in and the first thing I'm gonna do is I wanna get my lattice in a place where it's controlling the areas I wanna control. So right now it's kind of five up and nothing else is just a default lattice. I'm gonna to start to increase my resolution. I wanna have one point right here on the corner and then one in the middle. And then I wanna have a point somewhere in the cheek for where this corner is gonna tuck into and form our smile. So I wanna control those areas. And the reason I do this with the lattice is we can use this lattice later to build our other expressions. And I know that I'm moving the same points at the same rate. So when I move my control around, it's all consistent and things don't feel like, things don't feel weird. Like sometimes I'll, someone will send me a rig to look at and I'll pull a smile and all these beautiful points are moving and I'll move a frown and then like four verts move because they're building the shape separately and they're not thinking about how shapes interact with each other. So I'm gonna grab this lattice and this base. And I'm gonna start fitting it. So I'm gonna scale it down a little bit. And I wanna get a point about where the smile is gonna tuck into. And I also wanna get, want this row here to hit the corner of the mouth. So I'm gonna raise this up a little bit. Um, some people use soft mods, some people use different deformers for this. There's a million things you can do. There, there's definitely like no shortage of ways to, to get your deformation to be in a clean space. I like a lattice because I just like pulling around points. I'm going to make this lattice a little bigger and I'm actually going to increase the resolution because I want to affect some into the eyelid. One thing that I try to do in my rigs is I try to make sure that any shape I'm making affects not just that shape area, but a little bit around it so you feel the life in the shape. I think a lot of rigs will have too small of a control where you'll build a smile and nothing like around here moves. Uh, for me, I want when you build a smile, I just want it to feel natural and fleshy. And then we can build micro controls that will control smaller things later. That way also, when you're handing your rig off to a more junior animator or across a team, if they're only moving one control to make their smile, then people are gonna have the same smile. It's gonna stay on model. People aren't gonna break your rig and make your rig look bad. Uh, it helps you and it helps the team. So I think big broad controls and then giving micro controls underneath is a really good approach to rigging in general. All right, so this character has the lattice about where I want it. Now I just need to control this corner. So I need to add some edge loops or edge loops, some divisions in the middle here. So something like that, doesn't really matter. Um, you can move this forward some, uh, this is all very flexible. And if I don't like this lattice I just made, you can just make a new one. It doesn't take a lot of setup to get you going. And that's why I like this approach. So if this lattice doesn't work, we'll just dump it and do another one. It's not a big deal. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna duplicate this character again. Um, just, I'm just hitting control D. I'm gonna leave this here because this is where we're gonna do some paint weighting from the lattice to this afterwards. But uh, first thing, let's go sculpt our smile. When you're making a smile, a smile really does two things. It goes up and it goes into the face. All of our face shapes are going to be wrapping around teeth on our character. So if you're doing a wide or a narrow, you don't wanna just go straight in X because that's not really how your mouth functions. Like your lips are colliding with teeth and as you pull around, things are gonna move in and out around your teeth. So always think about that when you're sculpting your shapes. I see a lot of people that will grab controls and just move it directly out. And then what happens is that might look fine when the character's mouth is closed, but when you open, now those, uh, that corner is way far away from the teeth and you just have a big giant hole there. So first things first, let's move this up. On our smile shape, it's going to be on the translate Y, so up and down. So I don't wanna put a lot of X movement in it. But because this is a smile shape, I need to put in some, because otherwise if I just create a tuck out of just a straight up and down, it's gonna look a bit weird. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually bring it outward a little bit this way. And that way when we sculpt in our tuck, it'll start to feel correct. So right now this doesn't look great, but it, it's actually in a, in a really good place for us to get, get what we need. 
Um, you always want to kind of move these front points. Uh, otherwise, your, your facial expression can be tipping a little bit. Because if we look at where this is contained, it's contained between these two points, this area of the face. So if these move roughly the same rate, they're going to be all parallel. But I don't quite want that. So you just bring these front points kind of where you, you feel like they, they're right. Cool. So next up, you'll see we have a harsh straight, harsh straight, because it's a lattice. But that's OK. So we're going to grab these two points. I'm going to bring this stuff up. And I actually want to get a nice straight line. And I don't care that the nose is being broken. We're going to worry about that later. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the points to feel like they're moving in the correct place. So the way I can check this is a lattice has a, an envelope attached to it. So if I scrub this envelope, I can see where my points are moving. So I, I think it's feeling OK. Let's look at the side. Yeah, so I think that's, that's a, a good ballpark movement. Now you'll notice if I turn on the wireframe, it's pretty dead everywhere else. So the cool thing though, is now we have lattice points that we can move and these have a very broad fall off into the cheeks. So the mouth corner right now, it's going into a cheek and it's causing the cheek to bulge out. So what we're gonna wanna do is we wanna sell where the volume's going. So if my corner is going up, I wanna sell that volume being pushed and it feeling fleshy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring this area up a little bit. I'm actually gonna bring it out some and I'm gonna even do a little bit up here because I wanna feel a lot of life. You see, we're feeling a little better now. Now things are moving. I think this area is moving a little too fast. Let me undo that movement and let me just move it. Okay, so let's just nudge it a little bit. And you'll see I'm not doing a lot. I'm doing a very little and I'm always checking by scrubbing this to see how things feel. So you see right now that it's having a good, good buildup. So the smile is gonna affect the cheek. And if you look at the cheek on this carrot, it's actually pretty big. It goes all the way up to here. So what I wanna do is I wanna move some of those points too. So I'm gonna move some of that up. And it's going to go out a little bit. And these ones I might even nudge a little bit this way. And you notice I'm not doing anything crazy. Like this is all very small movement. But what it's going to do is this is going to really sell that this is lifting up this mass of the cheek. So th the great thing here is I've done no point sculpting. Like I'm not, not doing anything that's taking me a lot of time. I also know that all this is working mathematically within the lattice very well. I'm going to move this up a little bit more. Let me try this point to this. Yep, that's going to move the mouth, nose a little bit. So on the corner control of the face here, I do want to include the nostril sum. We're going to build nostril controls later and a more elaborate way to control that area. But I feel like if you don't have a little bit of nostril movement baked into the smile, it just feels a bit unnatural. Also, because I'm moving all of this stuff nicely here, if this character has textures or anything that's going to have any sort of difference, you're going to see that move and it's going to feel more organic. All right, so now we have something that can build the foundation for my smile. So now what I want to do is I want to not have this linear mouth feeling. A lattice is really good at positioning things, but it, it's terrible because it does everything linear and everything feels a bit robotic. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply this as a blend shape. So this one, then this one. So from here, what I'm going to do is now is I'm going to go in and I'm going to paint some of these weights off and start to control where things are happening. With this menu, I'll be able to control and paint off the effect of my blend shape. It just has a real quick explainer. And then I paint to zero is going to turn this shape off. So pretty cool. And if I just flood to one, everything's back. So now I want to go in and I want to block out how my movement's going to look. So I know that a smile isn't this kind of crazy line. Like that's a bit extreme. So I know I want this area affected less. Uh, the cool thing about this approach is you don't have to be super specific. I know, say, generally this area, let's go in and I'm going to make that, let's say, like a point. 0.25. So that's what we got. So now that area dropped down and you can see I'm starting to feel out where the turn of my smile is going to go. Um, I also think this nose is moving too much. So I think I might actually maybe even up into here, move this stuff about 0.25. So it doesn't look great, but what this does is it's starting to get me to feel like the rate things are moving. And you can see I, I spent no work doing that. So we're trying to do things very quickly. So if something doesn't work, we can just dump it and start again. From now, from here, I could just smooth this. So actually, I think that's not too bad. Um, the cool thing about this now is we have a nice arc. But what I want to show you is this lattice is still live. So if I scrub the lattice, blend shape goes off. If I move the lattice around, if I move this lattice, this stuff is all connected. So I have my fall off built in here. I'm controlling where things are placed mathematically here. So I'm separating my two ideas out, and they're all still live. So it makes things really handy.